Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Mike Martin Show here on AM790 WPRV and on Facebook Live. I'm your host, Scott Cordishi. The Mike Martin Show brought to you in part by United Healthcare. United Healthcare, you put care into everything that you do. United Healthcare does too. United Healthcare, health plans that care for you and your family every step of the way. See what care can do at uhc.com. Well, coming up on the show tonight, we'll be joined by a pair of freshmen on this year's team. Malachi Endor and Zach Taylor will be our guest in just a few minutes. And later on, we'll be joined by Steven Silas from the class of 96. He's in his first year as the head coach of the NBA's Houston Rockets. But first things first, let's say hello. Hello to Russ Tyler, Brown Class of 71, and our color analyst for Brown Basketball here on WPRV. Russ, how are you? Scott, I'm great. It's always, always great to be here. Good to see you and Mike as always. Yeah, having a lot of fun doing the shows this year. We wish we yeah. could be at Hope Street Pizza with yeah. Saki and everybody, but you know what? This isn't bad either. And let's welcome the head coach of the Bears to the show as well, Mike Martin. Coach Martin, how are you tonight? Guys, good evening. I'm doing great. Good to be with you as always. All right, Coach. So it's been uh, almost two weeks now since you've been able to have some small workouts with the team, you know, socially distanced, masked on the court. What's it been like uh, working with your players? It's been great. It's been a breath of fresh air. Uh, you know, I made the analogy recently uh, talking with somebody. It's like a you know teacher being back in the classroom. Um, you know, I've, I've been able to get back in with our students and, you know, connect with them on a, you know, in-person level, obviously, you know, distance with masks on, but uh, it, it's been outstanding. The energy from our uh, players every day uh, is, is outstanding. Uh, the attitude, the coachability, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's been great. We're going to take it every opportunity we're afforded and use it to try to prepare for next uh, season to develop these student athletes, uh, to try to improve. And we've already seen, you know, great progress made in the two weeks we've been on the court. Um, you know, and, and for our new freshmen, for our four freshmen who are here, uh, you know, we can introduce a lot of concepts and a lot of drills and a lot of uh, teaching points uh, so that it's not brand new for them next September. So it, it's it's been a it's been while we miss the uh, ability to compete uh, against other institutions, uh, it's been a great thing to be back on the court. Yeah, and, and Mike, can you talk a little bit about or explain at least to me the change in the Ivy rule relative to uh, if you're a current senior, you can you retain eligibility as a graduate student next year. So how do, how does that impact the Bears? How does it impact the rest rest of the league? It's a great question, Russ. And we're still in kind of information gathering mode. Uh, you know, the announcement was made on Thursday, and you know, obviously, you know, today's you know just uh, midweek. Uh, you know, so we're still trying to gather some info. Uh, we've had some conversations. Um, you know, there you know there's questions to be answered as far as you know, graduate school programs that might be available, um, you know, different, you know, impact financial aid uh, for graduate school. So, uh, you know, I, I commend the Ivy League presidents uh, for making this uh, uh, an opportunity for all the senior student athletes. It's only a one year thing just for the current seniors who are in their fourth year uh, who want to play here uh, next year. Uh, but they have to have a graduate full time graduate school program. Uh, that they can get admitted to and uh, you know that makes sense so um, uncertain how it'll impact our players directly at this point uh, we are still gathering that information. And Mike what just a quick follow-up is is this like for instance Paul Atkinson committed to Notre Dame I guess whatever that means do you have any idea can we revoke that commitment or what the heck happens with something like that or just guesswork at this point? Yeah that would be guesswork on my end so I wouldn't even want to speculate uh, yeah. obviously you think about, you know, if you just bring that young man up, uh, for example, uh, it's uh, not a bad uh, option, whether you get your master's yeah. from Notre Dame or Yale and play. So uh, whatever he whatever he ends up doing, I'm sure uh, it's going to work out just well, just fine for yeah. him. Yeah, personally, I'd love to see him play for Mike Bray and the Irish. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a heck of a player, that's for sure. And yeah. we enjoyed watching him in the Ivy League. Uh, so, Coach, just getting back to, you know, working out with your student athletes. Um, so what is their day-to-day -day schedule like? Are they taking most of their classes, all of their classes remotely? And then at what time of the day are you able to get with them, either on the court, in the weight room? I mean, give us a, an idea of the day-to-day -day routine right now. Yeah, so uh, it depends on the what classes you're in. You know, some of our students are all virtual because all their classes are more than 20. Uh, others do have a couple that are in person. If there's less than 20 uh, students in the class, 
you know, I, I think uh, some, you know, the virtual ones are live. Uh, I think, you know, all of them are recorded as well. So, you know, they have the ability to go back and, and watch a lecture, or, you know, revisit uh, that. We're in what's considered our uh, in-season portion of uh, the calendar year, you know, from an NCAA and Ivy League compliance standpoint. So we're allowed 12 hours of physical activity uh, with the students that are enrolled here in Providence. So uh, how we've done it is, you know, we're doing three uh, weightlifting sessions with our strength coach, Mike Pimentel, for one hour per week. Uh, we've got three hours uh, that we are devoted to. Uh, we call take, we have to take our vitamins every day as basketball players if we want to be the best we can possibly be. That's shooting, that's passing, that's dribbling. That's, you know, a lot of the fundamental skills, footwork. And, you know, so, we, so we're, we're breaking that down into – four 45 minute sessions uh, per week with each student uh, where they really get one-on-one -on -one attention with the, the coaches. And, you know, uh, for our new guys, it's been great to really focus on uh, new footwork and new drills and, and, and different skills. You know, we have a lot of, you know, data that we're inputting to be very frank with you, some of our shooting drills and some of our, um, you know, practice uh, drills. Uh, and then we're, we're, we got six hours of uh, uh, practice, uh, which, you know, it sounds, uh, it's not like normal practice. It's socially distanced. Uh, it's wearing masks. We had nine, uh, the nine student athletes in the gym yesterday. And uh, we went through a lot, all of our socially distanced uh, drills. And there's some we had to get creative with from a defensive standpoint, uh, as far as closing out to a chair as opposed to a person. But, you know, we can still break down a lot of uh, important fundamentals and skills. And so we're doing that three, three days a week for two hours. Yesterday was our first time with all nine uh, student athletes and the coaching staff. Um, we went for about an hour and a half, uh, you know, physically, we've got to, you know, be careful about how quickly we ramp up, but, uh, you know, they're, they're busy with that schedule. You know, you, you, either you're in the weight room, you're in the gym, uh, in one-on-one -on -one sessions, you're in the gym in full team sessions. And it's, uh, you know what, we're, 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 we're grateful for the opportunity we have. Yeah. And, and Mike, there was an announcement last week that Brown, uh, has increased their tuition and fees by, I think 2.85% for, for next year. Um, how does that impact you with what you're doing, recruiting guys coming in? It's a great question. Yeah. You know, obviously I, every university is facing major, you know, financial, uh, you know, um, challenges and, and uh, decisions, you know, due to the pandemic. Uh, I did see that increase. I think it's, you know, well in line with what other institutions similar to us are doing. Uh, and, you know, the great thing about our league and the great thing about our university, our institution is, uh, you know, we, we can really, you know, meet a lot of uh, financial needs. So, you know, the tuition obviously has gone up. Uh, it hasn't gone down in the last uh, 30 years, uh, but uh, the, the financial aid and grant money that's available for students that need it, uh, you know, obviously we're need-based financial aid, uh, is, has been, you know, very, very effective in our league and I think has helped uh, all the programs attract top-level student-athletes. All right, Coach Russ, we'll take a quick time out because when we come back on the Mike Martin Show, we'll be joined by a pair of freshmen on this year's team. Malachi Endor and Zach Taylor will be our guests when we continue with the Mike Martin Show right after this. You put care into everything you do. United Healthcare does too. Like connecting you to care whenever you need it. Because like you, United Healthcare knows what care can do. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we're not going to leave anything on our plates because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there and they never tasted this good. Welcome back to the Mike Martin Show on AM 790 WPRV and on Facebook Live. This portion of the show brought to you by the Brown University Sports Foundation. Through your donation and the work of our volunteers, the Brown Sports Foundation is committed to providing funding and support to Brown Athletics to enhance the student-athlete experience. Thank you for your generosity and your service to Brown Athletics. Well, right now, it gives us great pleasure to welcome a couple of incoming freshmen uh, to the program. First off, a 684 from St. Thomas, Ontario. He uh, played most recently at Cushing Academy. Uh, Malachi Endur is with us. Malachi, how are you? I'm good. Pleasure to be on. 
Well, thank you for being with us. And also with us tonight, a 6'2 freshman guard from Austin, Texas, played at Northfield Mount Hermon last year. Zach Taylor is with us. Zach, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, Malachi, we'll, we'll, we'll start with you uh, from north of the border up in St. Thomas, Ontario. And, and I guess the first question I had is we had a terrific player from your neck of the woods, Obi Akoli, who was the Ivy League's Defensive Player of the Year a couple of years ago. Did you know Obi at all? And I'm just curious if he had any type of influence on your coming to Brown. So I actually met Obi. Um, I took an unofficial visit to Brown um my my senior year um and I met Obi while I was on my visit and uh, I was able to talk with him just about his experience at Brown he was uh at this time he had um I think he was in his uh, his last semester of his um of his senior year and I was able to talk to him and get some really good insight from him and his experience, um, you know, as, as a player, as a student at Brown, and also, you know, as a fellow Canadian, and, um, you know, the adjustment process that he went through um, and everything. So, he, yeah, he was hearing from him and, and speaking to him was great for me and um, he provided a lot of a lot of good information that, you know, ultimately helped me uh, decide and choose Brown and um, made me felt like this was – this was home. And, and Zach, you were at Northview Mount Hermon last year, last March, when the pandemic hit, and um, you guys had obviously shut down and you returned to Austin, presumably. So it must be good at this point in time to be working out with the Brown Bears at the Pizzatola Center with, with official workouts back on the floor. Yes, it is. Um, you know, I'm more than happy. Our season got cut short last year. Uh, Actually, before our final game, we were in the semifinals of the um, the prep school national tournament, and the refs came up to us and they told us that this would be the final game of the tournament. Um, and it was kind of weird because every day there were less and less people allowed in the gym. And then, you know, the final game hit, and, and in the locker room after the game, we said our goodbyes, and that was the last time I saw my guys. But I'm happy to be here with my new team and on campus at Brown and to get in the gym, and um, it's truly a blessing. So. And Coach Martin, uh, NMH, Northfield Mount Hermon, uh, Brown basketball has been fortunate enough to have a lot of uh, Northfield Mount Hermon alums, most recently Matt DeWolf and Davis Franks, and now Zach. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a program that has produced many big-time Division One college basketball players, both here in the Ivy League and elsewhere. Yeah, it's a, obviously a great program. And, and Zach and uh, Prince Moses are both freshmen on our team, on our roster from Northfield. Um, and, you know, going back to – you know, what Zach was just talking about, that I, that was prior to February 4th. That was the last time I was in a gym. Now, we, we've since been in the gym with these guys for the last couple of weeks, but watching Zach and Prince and his teammates, and Malachi was in that same tournament too at uh, Connecticut College, you know, and I remember going to watch all those guys. Malachi and Zach had already decided on Brown at the time. Prince had not, and, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, he made his decision to come to Brown. But, uh, you know, just Zach recalling that uh, tournament, uh, brought back some memories for me. But uh, going back to my time as a, as a player here, Scott, Jesse Wood, Travis Brown, were both North, Northfield Mount Hermon uh, alums. Sam Manhanga, class of 07, Andrew McCarthy, and, you know, obviously Chris Sullivan, Matt DeWolf, as you mentioned, Joe Sharkey. We've had some unbelievable uh, student athletes from NMH. John Carroll's their head coach uh, and just does an amazing job uh, recruiting top uh, student athletes like Zach and Prince and, and all those that we've mentioned but also developing them and, and coaching them. So when they get here, uh, they're usually prepared to, to, to make an impact. Yeah, and Malachi, so you, you grew up in Canada where hockey is king and you grew up in a family where your dad played in the National Hockey League for a number of years. How did basketball come into play? Um, so my story is kind of kind of interesting. Um, my, my main sport was soccer growing up. I... Um, my, my dad played in England from about when I was five years old up until I was around eight or nine. And so um, I spent those years in England and, you know, it, soccer is the main sport over there. So that was the main sport I played growing up, up until about, I would say my freshman year summer, um, 
of high school is when I, I, I made the transition to, to basketball and, and it started to take that more serious. Um, I, I had played basketball growing up just, you know, with my friends and um, in the playground and stuff like that. And I always had so much fun playing. It was uh, um, during when I was playing soccer, um, it was my escape, really. Like, um, I was playing soccer at a high level. And, um, you know, it was coming to a point where, you know, I wasn't really having fun participating in the sport. And basketball was, you know, my escape. And, and I, I just I just loved it. And I knew that... Um, if I was feeling this way about soccer and basketball, you know, it was my escape and my, you know, brought me happiness. I knew I needed to um, do that full time and take it serious. So uh, my freshman year summer, I started taking basketball seriously. It was my, my, my main sport. And uh, yeah, from there, uh, you know, good things have happened. Obviously um, I've been able to, uh, I've been been uh, been able to play on the uh, U16 men's Canadian um, national team that par participated in Argentina in 2017. Uh, we were silver medalists at that tournament. Um, I, I was named uh, uh, a Bioso All Canadian um, in 2017 as well. Um, you know, basketball just uh, you know provided so many opened so many doors for me and provided me with so many you know amazing opportunities and I'm so thankful for that yeah Malachi you answered my next question about playing for the Canadian national team that sounds like a great experience coach I want to get your opinion on this because as Russ mentioned every, when people think of Canada they, they think obviously hockey it's the national sport yet more and more great basketball players are coming from north of the border to play division one college basketball here and even at the next level in the NBA um, have you found that? I mean, is this kind of like, uh, was it uh, kind of an under-recruited area for many years and now people are starting to get turned on to the basketball talent north of the border? There's great talent up there. There's great players uh, and there's great young men. You know, you think about some of the folks who, you know, we've had at Brown uh, who, who grew up in, in, in Ken Canada, Keenan Jefferson back in, you know, class of 08, Obi Akoli, Malachi Nadir, obviously really good players and, and talented students. But, you know, just great people. And, uh, you know, they really help uh, their values align with ours. And uh, yeah, it's, there's so many good players, uh, you know, around the world. Uh, it's not limited to just the United States. And obviously there's, there's great talent up in Canada for sure. And, and, and Zach, let me ask you, uh, how did Brown come into the picture in terms of your interest in a, in a college education? Um, what was the recruiting like? And how did you narrow it down to Brown? We're glad you're here. How'd you get here? So um, when I was playing for Northwood Mount Hermon, um, we have our open runs in the fall and, um, you know, coaches come to those and they come, you know, recruit and we talk to them afterwards. And I remember Coach TJ came to one of our open runs. I think it was actually one of our last ones. And um, yeah, he, you know, saw me play. I ended up actually having a, a really good open run day that day. It was, I had like 61 points, I believe. Um, in total and uh, you know coach TJ came up to me afterwards and he was like you can shoot that thing and I was like <laughs> I was like yes sir I can um, and you know he was talking to me about Brown um, about how it'd be a great opportunity and you know he said he wants to go back and talk with coach Martin but um, if everything works out and the academics work out um, that you know they would love for me to come play at Brown University and you know um, that was just because I mean coming from my background, I was, you know, I wasn't really recruited out of high school, kind of the whole reason why I had to do a postgraduate year in the first place. Um, and so that in and of itself was just an Ivy League school, be able to play basketball, do the two things I love most, which are study and play basketball, which is a phenomenal opportunity. And then on top of that, to be able to do it at Brown University, um, it's kind of a no brainer to me, honestly. Uh, when I got the opportunity, I kind of jumped on it and I did what I had to do um, with Coach Martin as far as my academics. And Got it done and um, kind of sealed the deal. So, 
and Zach, as a follow-up to that, you won a state title as a freshman in the state of Texas. Um, and I'm not sure if you were aware of this, but before our season was canceled, we had a game scheduled in your hometown of Austin, Texas against the Longhorns non-conference. Maybe we can get that back on the schedule before you're out of here. Um, but you mentioned going to Northfield, Mount Hermon. Was that just so you could be more highly recruited because you just weren't highly recruited coming out of high school? So you felt like a PG year was the best thing for you? Yes, correct. Um, my freshman year, we had a, a big name, Jared Allen, who uh, played for us at, or with me, I guess, at St. Stephen's. And he brought a lot of recruitment. And I got some recruitment my freshman year, but then it kind of died down as the years went on. And so we decided that post-grad year is the best decision from, uh, for me and my recruitment. And so we ended up doing. And we went to Northland Mount Hermon. And I, you know, wouldn't regret anything that I did there. And uh, the rest is history, so. And, and Mike, do you mind if I point out to, to Zach that the last time the Bears played in, in Austin, um, Texas was coming off a Final Four appearance, and they opened up with the Brown Bears' first game of the 2003-04 season. Of course, that was your senior year, and Texas did escape with a win. But if my memory serves me correct, correctly, you did not play in that game. You were injured. Is that correct? Yeah, we would have obviously won if I had played. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just remember – a funny uh, story uh, about that game. My classmate and uh, ultra talented uh, Patrick Powers. I remember he 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 was you know Earl Hunt had left and Elahi had left. So like there were all these available shots now for, for, for the rest of us that were survived. And I was on the bench. So like you know Pat had the green light, and I remember he pulled up from deep. And the next day in film, uh, Coach Miller uh, you know joked like you know he was pulling up from the Longhorn, the logo, which was at basically at half court. And he thought it was a little bit out of his range. But uh, anyways, yeah, we uh, that was Austin's a great place, and we uh, yeah. we hope and plan to get back there. That's awesome. Malachi, you, you told us about your interest in soccer. I'm reading your bio and some of the other interests include reading, music, and cooking. Uh, uh, what kind of music, number one, and what do you like to cook, number two? Um, music, uh, I, um, a, a lot of rap, a lot of R&B. Um, I do like classical music, um, old soul music, old blues music. Um, really interested in that. Um, cooking wise, uh, everything really. Um, I do make a really good chicken Alfredo dish. So Sounds I say good. That's my, that's my best one. Sounds good. <laughs> Zach, any hobbies for you off the court? Um, actually I surf back home. Um, I'm a big surfer. Uh, in Austin, Texas. Yeah, so we we uh, wake surf behind a boat back home. So, okay. Um, yeah, on the lake, you have a boat, and the boat creates like you know a big wake, and you just kind of surf behind that and listen to some music. Nice. Um, I'm a big fan of that. Before I started playing basketball seriously, I was a big skier, big snowboarder. Um, I can do both. I can do just about anything on both of those. Um, but yeah, you know, honestly, as far as hobbies go. I have a twin sister who um, I do everything with, or I guess I used to. She's at uh, SMU in Dallas right now, but, um, you know, I just would hang out with her all the time. So as far as cooking goes, uh, Malachi might have me beat with the chicken Alfredo, but um, <laughs> I can uh, I can grill some chicken and get some rice going. So if I need to do something, I can. <laughs> hey, Coach, you're going to have to take Zach down to Narragansett Town Beach if he likes to surf, right? Well, he, he can learn from the one and only Russ Tyler, who I heard, you know, is, is the legend when it comes to surfing down in Narragansett. That's true. Body Mike, I'm, I'm, Mike, I'm only the 27 time defending champion down there. So that's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Malachi, just one other, one other question. Mike's coached three different guys who are Ivy defensive players of the year. Cedric Quacamenza got that on her twice. And then Obi Akoli once and, and, uh, Jalen Ganey this uh, well this past this past year they see you were you were the defensive player of the year in 2017. You ready to play some defense at Brown? Of course, I love playing defense. Um, with our guys, especially too, we got a lot of length, a lot of athleticism, a lot of speed. So I think we'll be we'll be lethal defensively. Um, I know one of our team goals, um, as we were, you know. Uh, Speaking in the in the in the late summer and uh, early fall, just speaking over some team goals um, for for this season that unfortunately got canceled. But we wanted to be top fifty 
um, in the country in defensive rating. So, um, you know, our team takes defense with the up, utmost priority. And um, for myself, even, I know that, you know, if I can get it done on the defensive end, everything else in my game is just going to become so much easier. Um, going to get easy points of transition, going to feel better. Um, you know, stops just – stops fuel, fuel our team and fuel, um, you know, what we want to do in the game and uh, you know, defense is everything and uh, I can't wait to get out there and, and play man I'm so excited for it. Zach last question for you and, and Malachi just kind of hinted on it he said I can't wait to get out there and play it's been a challenging year for all of us dealing with the pandemic how nice is it to get back out on the court have a basketball in your hands be with your teammates I know it's not the same everything socially distanced and with masks but just to be back out on the floor how good is that it feels absolutely amazing um I can't even describe the feeling honestly because I know, you know, Malachi and I went through it together, um, not being able to come to, to campus uh, the first semester and then, you know, having our season canceled. There was a lot of adversity that we had to deal with, especially as like Division One athletes, um, but just kind of rolling with the punches and understanding that when adversity hits, you know, you can either make you or break you. And so um, just learn from uh, what happened in the past and keep it moving forward. And that's what we did. And we're finally here and we're on the court and we get to play. And so we're just kind of thankful for every opportunity because I'll tell you what, you know, going through the whole COVID situation, um, as far as my season last year, and even, you know, this season, this year, um, you should have a greater appreciation for the game of basketball. And like, you know, the fact that we get to play at such a phenomenal institution and like, it's just, you know, it's, it's almost surreal. And it just, you have a greater appreciation with everything that went on, so. Well, I'll tell you what, I know I speak for Russ and all Brown basketball fans when I say we cannot wait to see you and the entire team out on the floor uh, next fall and winter. So uh, thanks for joining us on Coach Martin's show, both of you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you out on the court. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. All right. That's Malachi Endur and Zach Taylor, a couple of freshmen for the Brown Bears with us on the Mike Martin Show. We'll take a time out. And when we come back in our alumni spotlight, we'll catch up with the head coach of the Houston Rockets, Stephen Silas from the class of 96, will be our guest when we continue right after this. The Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through the directorscup.com, USA Today, or L Directors' Cup on Twitter. Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Danielle. I'm here to present to you the Performance Fit Series brought to you by Performance Physical Therapy. Uh, this is for anyone, if you're an athlete, you're exercising from home or you're just returning to the gym. Even Bruno the Bear can do these types of exercises. We've got strength and conditioning, some flexibility and mobility as well as speed and agility. So you can find all of these videos at brownrec.com or performanceptri.com. Hope you enjoy. Welcome back to the Mike Martin Show on AM 790 WPRV and on Facebook Live, our final segment of the show brought to you by the Hilton Garden in Providence, the only waterfront hotel in the city featuring newly renovated rooms, public space and a bar and lounge area with outdoor seating and spectacular views of the harbor located at 220 India Street, Providence. Make your reservation today. Well, Right now, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the Mike Martin Show in our alumni segment from the class of 96. He's currently the head coach of the NBA's Houston Rockets. Stephen Silas is with us. Stephen, how are you? I'm good. I'm great, actually. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Well, Coach, thank you for being with us. You've been so nice in giving back of your time to Brown. You were with us on the Brown Bears podcast a couple of months ago, and I know you talked to the team earlier this summer uh, for Coach Martin as part of the Black Excellence Speaker Series. So it's just wonderful how much you stay connected with your alma mater and how much you give back to Brown. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Brown holds a very important place in my heart and Mike has been amazing as far as like keeping me in the loop and sending texts and we've been just kind of 
building a friendship over the last few years. So it's it's great to be back and be, be a part of Brown basketball and the Brown community as a whole. And, and, and Stephen, hi, Russ Tyler with you. Good to see you again, Stephen. Uh, you bring back great memories of your time as a basketball player at Brown. And uh, I wonder if you might share some of those memories with us right now. Yeah, so I played, uh, I graduated in 96. I played for Happy Dobbs and uh, some of my teammates were Eric Blackiston, my year. Uh, Brian Lloyd was my year. James Joseph was my year. So uh, we were a, we were an average team, you know, like we wish we, we thought we were a lot better than we were. And, you know, they say your record is kind of who you are. So I think our best record might have been maybe like 14 and 12 or 13 and 13, something like that. Uh, but it was really just the relationships that I built with my teammates and people who I still keep in touch with today. And the education obviously was amazing, but just the, the people that you meet at Brown and the different mindsets. I mean, you, you come from high school and you're, you have this like, big fish in small pond attitude and you're a good basketball player and um, I went to St. Thomas More uh, prep school in, in Connecticut and spent a PG year there and before that I went to John Jay High School in New York and it's very two small schools and and kind of singular of thought and everybody's kind of the same and then you go to Brown and you're opened up to so many different people and and ways of thinking and professors and parties and all of these just amazing things that brown is and um so the basketball part was good and i enjoyed playing four years for happy dobbs and i enjoyed our time wish we could have won a few more games but it was definitely the long lasting relationships with not just the basketball players but just the Brown community that I take with me, um, you know, to where I am today. So if I'm not mistaken, you played for Coach Dobbs and Coach Sinkowitz was on the staff as well. A couple of good Villanova guys. My, Coach Sink now coaches my son in high school here in Providence. Does he really? Yes, oh, he does. man. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, I love Coach Sink and Coach Dobbs. So happy, actually. I spoke to him a lot kind of going through this process with the Houston Rockets this summer. Um, he's close with obviously Ed Pigney, who um, he played with at Villanova, both he and Sink played with. And uh, Ed was actually part of the uh, interview process. So I was just, you know, poking around and trying to see uh, what Coach Dobbs had to say. And uh, he helped me go immensely actually through the process of uh, the interview process here in, in Houston and uh, you know, we've, we had kind of disconnected for, for a while. And it's, again, it's try to, it's good to be back connected with him because he was a big part of my uh, maturation process at Brown, for sure. You've played for and coached with many wonderful coaches, your dad included. And I'm wondering who's had maybe the biggest influence on you as a coach? Is it your father, Paul? Is it, you know, is it Rick Carlisle, Don Nelson? Was it happy? Who's had the biggest influence on you in terms of your coaching career? Yeah, I, I mean, my dad obviously is the, the main one. He's the one who gave me the opportunity to be a scout um, under him and then become an assistant coach and be able to ask dumb questions and give me a lot of responsibility at 27 year, years old that maybe I wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. And he was a, a player's coach and that's what I try to be. So a lot of the things that I've learned, it's funny, like there will be a halftime or a timeout where I'll say something that he would always say. And I'm like, oh, it's just in me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he would be laughing so hard if he heard some of the things that I say during during timeouts or at halftime. But yeah, uh, I've obviously worked with some great people and take try to take a little bit from each one. My dad, as far as being a player's coach, Don Nelson, who I worked for for four years in Golden State and, and just outside the box thinking he was just amazing at 
looking at the game in a different way. And he was way ahead of his time. Then I worked for my dad again. Then I worked for Steve Clifford, who is like tactically one of the best coaches in the NBA, especially on the defensive side. And um, his attention to detail is in the vein of Jeff Van Gundy, Tibbs, Pat Riley, those guys. So I learned a lot from him. And then Rick Carlisle, I learned a ton about just like managing the whole thing, but also being adaptable because situations come and obviously I've had a bunch of situations here with Houston so far, but I learned a lot from him as far as making sure that you're adaptable to whatever uh, the NBA throws at you. And, and, and Steven, so you've uh, been influenced by great, great coaches, as, as you just said, but you've also coached some of the best players in the world from Stephon Curry, LeBron James, James Harden, now, now you've got John Wall. Let me ask you a question. How hard do these guys work at their game, at their craft? They work, I mean, they work really hard. And most of these guys I've had were at the beginning of their career. So when I had LeBron, it was his first two years in the league. And he was bigger, stronger, faster at that point at 19 years old, but he still had to put the work in. And then Steph Curry, I had him his first two years in the league. And his was a little different because he wasn't bigger, stronger, faster than anybody in the league. So it was his work ethic that really kind of separated him from everybody else. And then I had the opportunity to coach Luka Doncic in his first two years in the league. And uh, he had came over and nobody really knew what was going to become of him because he had played overseas and had so much success, but nobody knew if it would translate to the NBA and obviously it has, and, and he is a conscientious worker and you see the improvement from year to year with Luca. And then I was only with James for a little bit, but you just see the greatness in James and the greatness in James is very much based in the work that he puts in. I mean, after practice every day, he's getting his shots up and, and making sure that all of the shots that he shoots in a game are shots that he works on. And now John Wall is, very much the same as those guys, but different because he's coming from a situation where he was out for two years. So the work that he had to put into actually just coming back and being back on an NBA floor um, and being as productive as he is, is definitely admirable. So all, all of them, the, as you kind of said, the, the thing that connects all of them is their work ethic. Mike, it's funny to hear Steven talk about, you know, being a little bit like his dad, Paul. It's kind of like that Geico commercial, right? We all become our parents. <laughs> Do you have any, have any traits that, uh, of Mike Sr. yourself uh, that slip out every once in a while? I'm sure I do. And, and, and it's Coach Miller, too. I, I find myself, you know, playing for him for four years and then, you know, working with him as an assistant coach for five years. Like, so that was nine straight years of my life. And, you know, so much of, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, I am who I am, but yeah, there's definitely been a lot of moments where I was like, that's something coach would say, or that's something my father would have said back to his teams way back. So I can, uh, I can certainly empathize with what Steven uh, <laughs> said about his father. Mike, what's it like to have a guy like Steven uh, that came out of this program that obviously is enjoying success at the highest level in the NBA as a head coach? Uh, and obviously the fact that he gives back, as I mentioned, you reached out to him this summer, right? He was part of your Black Excellence Speaker Series, talked to the entire team. Um, just talk a little bit about having somebody like Steven still stay so connected with your program. Yeah, it, it, we're, we're so grateful, Scott. And, and you know, Stephen obviously is one of, you know, 30 NBA head coaches. Uh, you know, we have so many across other industries, as we mentioned last week when we had Bernard Muir on, you know, so many former players and alumni who go on to incredible success uh, in their respective fields. So what makes Brown special is the people, right? And, you know, the people you go to school with, the people who may have come before you or come after you. Uh, I remember when, you know, in my early years, Stephen was an assistant with Charlotte, I believe, and, they had like a, a, a game in New York on a Wednesday night and then in Boston on a Friday night. And he, he, he came down and watched Brown basketball practice on Thursday. And it was like, it was an amazing opportunity for our students. Uh, but it just made me realize again, how special Brown is and how, you know, the folks who go to school here want to stay connected. They want to remain engaged. 
uh, and he's been so supportive of our student athletes. He wants to be a mentor. And, you know, you think about some of the guys on our team right now who have the ability to connect with the NBA head coach or a partner at Goldman and Sachs or, or, or wh whatever it might be. And I'm just very grateful that we have uh, people like Steven who want to give back to our student athletes. And Stephen, back to your playing days, uh, you had occasion to play down at Cameron Indoor Stadium a couple times. Um, Mike took his team there in December 2019, and they were uh, involved in a very close game with the Blue Devils, I think down single digits with seven or eight minutes left, and then Duke pulled away. And you guys had a similar experience, I believe, in uh, uh, number one ranked Duke, led by Grant Hill. You guys played them very, very tough. And eventually they pulled away at the end too. But your experiences down at Duke, if you recall. Yeah, so um, I did go down there twice, but I only made it in the game one time. <laughs> but, but the first year that we went down there, uh, like you said, they had Grant Hill. It's funny, I was just on NBA TV with Grant Hill a couple of days ago. He had no recollection of playing against me <laughs> in college, but... Um, yeah, it was amazing to to go down there and play against those guys. And Chris Collins was on the team and Grant Hill and Thomas Hill, I believe, was on the team. And I think it was tied at halftime. So we go into the locker room and we're like, they're not that good. We're just as good as them. You know, all we got to do is keep doing what we're doing. We'll be fine. And then we ended up losing the game by like 20 in the second half. They turned it off turned it up and and uh, beat us pretty handily. But experiences like that are just so cool. I mean, to that's one of the great things about playing at Brown and being an under division one team when you're really very much concentrated on your academics. But if you can kind of combine your academics and, and your basketball ability, you could have experiences like that where you go to Cameron and are playing against future Hall of Fame basketball players or um, just going around to different places that you see on television. We played in New Mexico at the pit and that was a really cool experience. And then obviously playing in the palestra is just something that is cool for me because my dad played in the palestra, <laughs> you know, he played <laughs> NBA games in the palestra. so. Uh, there are two places that I played, the Palestra and then the Providence Civic Center um, that he both that we both played in. And that's that's just such cool stuff. You know, Stephen, I uh, you mentioned some of the challenges you've had to deal with in your first year as head coach. And I watched your game last night on NBA TV at Washington and you had some challenges to deal with. You were without some of your best players, Eric Gordon, Victor Oladipo. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you guys were on a nice run. You had won seven of eight games. Uh, what was going on during that stretch that allowed you guys to click as a team and, and play your best basketball of the season? Yeah, we had our we had our group. We had our whole team together. And, and we really, after the James trade and, uh, and all that kind of went into that, uh, we really kind of focused in on the defensive end and became one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. I think before last night, we were fourth in the NBA in defense. I don't know what we're what we are right now but um we're probably we're definitely top 10 and we had a lot of versatility so christian wood has had a great season and um he's back, like right there in all-star voting and um had a good year last year in detroit we picked him up as a free agent and i had coached him previously in charlotte and he has turned the corner and he can pick and pop and shoot threes. He can roll to the rim. He can defend. Like there's so many different things that he can do. And he was leading us through that, through that stretch, him and John Wall and Eric Gordon and um, Victor Oladipo came in and he was playing well. So we kind of had everything clicking, especially on the defensive end. And the offense was kind of like secondary to, to our defense. If we were defending and rebounding, we could push and get easy baskets. Christian got hurt and we haven't won since. We haven't won the game since Christian's been down. And it seemed like it was a domino effect because Christian went down and then um, Victor and John Wall are coming off huge injuries. So they're not able to play back to back in back to back games. So one of those guys is sitting and Eric Gordon missed two games and PJ Tucker, who's 
played like 300 something straight games. He missed his first game last night. So um, it's been a struggle for the last six games. We've lost six in a row since Christian has been out. And, uh, you know, it's just part of the challenge of this position and figuring out a way to, to make it right and to make it better, even with limited um, guys on our roster. Yeah, and Stephen, every every night you're you're getting ready for somebody. So last night, Bradley Beal, who leads the league in scoring at 33 a game. Tomorrow night, you got Joel Embiid. If he if he plays, he's averaging almost 30 a game. Um, what are the special challenges involved in every single game? Getting your defense ready for guys like that. Yeah, so you have your base defense, and you have your kind of base coverages that you do with uh, the normal, with the regular guys, and then you have your great player defense that <laughs> is a little bit different. You know, there's a lot more attention that you have to put into guys like Beal, guys like Embiid, that um, <laughs> even if you do it perfectly or do it right, there's still immense talents and can make shots that are perfectly defended and you just, you know, nod your head and take the ball the other way. But um, yeah, every night there is some sort of challenge that goes outside of your kind of base that you work on. And we are striving to be a very adaptable team. We're striving to be a very versatile defensive team because in the past, this team has kind of just relied on small ball and switching. And since I've been here, we've done a lot, a little bit of everything. We played a little bit bigger with um, Christian Wood at the five, even bigger than him. DeMarcus Cousins has been playing for us since Christian has been down. But then we also do go small ball and get into some switching and some blitzing and changing the game up a little bit. So we're, we're trying to keep the, the offense off balance, especially those great players, but after being around so many great players over the last 20 years of my career, I know that um, good offense always beats good, de good defense. So Steve, my last question for you, I remember a conversation I had with Pete Gillum when he coached here at Providence and he said, you know, coaching isn't just about the X's and O's. He said at my level, the college level, he said, it's about putting out a major fire every day. He said, this player, you know, his girlfriend's pregnant. This player is failing out of this class. He said, there was always something going on off the court that you had to deal with. And I'm wondering in the NBA, you know, it's the old X's and O's, Billy's and Joe's argument. How much of what you do and your staff is X's and O's game planning? And how much is it managing people and dealing with personalities and, and trying to make sure everybody he's happy and getting everybody on the same page and pulling the rope in the same direction, so to speak. Yeah, the people part is everything. The X's and O's are kind of what they are. And, and most teams are kind of doing the same thing when it comes to the X's and O's. It's really trying to, and we don't have like the same, I guess, fires or, or contact with the guys off the floor as much, but we try to do what we can to have, especially during these times of COVID where we're kind of stuck in the hotel to have um, events where the guys are able to connect and staff, staff events where we're able to connect. But the guys feeling that their coach has confidence in them guys feeling that the next man is helping them play better, um, guys feeling that they are doing something that's a little bit bigger than themselves. We also, as a staff, um, kind of talk about other things besides basketball, like social justice and what's going on in the country and what's going on in the world. It's I, I told someone a few days ago, I have the opportunity to stand in front of 17 young men who are influencers every day. So these, these are guys who have a million Instagram followers or you know hundreds of thousands of people who look up to them. So uh, for me to make sure that the whole is kind of taken care of, not just the basketball part, not just the X's and O's part, but the people part is very important to me. And um, it, brings people together, but it also, to me, is the right thing to do. And one other thing, too, have you or your uh, players 
talk to families back home. I, I know Texas is going through a lot of issues with snow and ice and weather that obviously you're not used to getting down there, power outages. Is everybody doing okay as far as you know back in the Houston area? Yeah, they're hanging in there. They're definitely not prepared for anything like what they got. It's not like Rhode Island where you can get a, a, a uh, little bit of snow and it's like no big deal, but we got some ice and some snow and my my wife, she hasn't had power for the last two days. So <laughs> they're uh, sitting in front of the, the fireplace and they got their sleeping bags and they're they're kind of hanging out until it's time for the power to come back on. But yeah, it seems like everybody's doing okay. Everybody's staying off the road, staying safe and uh, just waiting for the 70 degree weather that's probably just like four days away <laughs> and uh, everything will kind of melt and, and we'll, we'll be okay. But there, you know, yesterday my wife sent me a picture of them in the garage with the garage door open in the car so they could charge their phones and, you know, get a little, get a little heat. And that's just different for wow. Texans, for sure. Sure. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us and, and for all that you do uh, for Brown and Brown basketball. And good luck to you and the Rockets for the remainder of the season. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right, Stephen Silas, class of 96, wrapping it up for us here on the Mike Martin Show. That'll do it for us. For the head coach of the Bears, Mike Martin, Russ Tyler, and Stephen Silas, my name is Scott Credici. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been a presentation of Learfield IMG College.